Hi and welcome to On Maths. Today we're going to be looking at 2017 grade boundary predictions. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin and this is our first On Maths video for 2016-2017, so exciting. Obviously there are massive changes now to the GCSE in Maths. Um, there is changes in topics, there's new higher topics, old ones gone, new foundation topics that used to be higher and old ones gone, and brand new foundation topics like Venn diagrams and a whole load of things, frequency trees and all sorts of things. So this is a big difference. Now instead of trying to go through all the differences in one video, we're going to be going through the differences throughout the year. I'm going to hopefully try and use the onmaths.com site to try and help you with the new topics. I know that a lot of schools, a lot of students are still using the old style textbooks. So the first things I'm focusing on are the new style questions. So if you are using an old style textbook, then hopefully you can use the onmaths.com to fill in the knowledge on, say, Venn diagrams, for instance. But the biggest change on paper and the biggest change that you're going to have to cope with for the rest of your life is the fact that there aren't any letter grades now, they are number grades. So the old system was foundation was between a G and a C and higher was technically between an E but sort of between a D and an A star. Everyone understood this and a U grade was ungraded. Now U grade is the only grade that is static, it won't change, but it's not really a grade, U stands for ungraded. Okay? It means you can walk into the paper, write your name, submit it, and that would be a U grade. So it's not one that we want. So that used to be the old system, and that's the one that employers know, universities know, everyone knows, everyone's happy with. Unfortunately, employers, universities, colleges, etc, etc, are going to have to learn this new system. And this new system is a little bit confusing, but the point of this video is to try and explain it a little bit, but also give you some context for whereabouts the grades are. Now, to do my predictions for the new system, I have to investigate first the old system and show you some statistics about where the grades were. The reason for that is the government have said that, say, a grade G is going to be equivalent to a grade 1, a grade 4 is equivalent to a grade C and a grade 7 is equivalent to a grade A and then the top fifth that get above that grade 7 will get a grade 9. Confused? Yeah, <laughs> so am I. They've said that the other grades will be worked out arithmetically. Okay, So those ones are statistical, the other ones are arithmetical. Who knows? Who knows what that means? <laughs> I know what it means but I don't know how they're going to implement it. Okay, so that's that's the rough gu guideline. So we need to figure out where a grade A, C and G were and then we can transpose those onto the new grading structure. So let's have a look at the data. Nice interesting data here. Okay, um, now to be honest with you, put that up for your reference. If you want that, here you go. Um, but it's easier seeing it on a graph. So let's put the foundation graph up. So you can see the C's at the top um, they've remained sort of static recently, around that 70% mark. I think it was 71% uh, in the last exams. Uh, D grades have been quite static. Okay, obviously you can see in June 2012 they're a lot lower, um, but since they've gone up, they've remained kind of the same, around that sort of 60% mark, and then 50, and then 40, and then sort of 30%. Okay, so grade G is sort of what does it say? sort of 30% yet, yeah, I was right. Okay, um, and that's useful, that's useful. So we know uh, uh, on the foundation paper, a grade one will be roughly sort of 30, 31%, okay? Um, and on the foundation paper, a uh, grade four will be about 70%, 71%, okay? Uh, moving on, um, and you can have a look at the higher ones here. Uh, obviously you can see that the higher ones have shifted quite a lot. Um, looking at that, you can see where an A star is, I mean you can read the, t the graph yourself. The ones on the right are more reliable because they're more recent, so chances are, and the, you know, the government have said the exam board should be looking at most recent papers rather than historic ones when they're coming up with the, their grade boundaries for the new grades. Uh, important one on this is obviously the A is around 70%, uh, so grade 7 
about 70, 65% somewhere in there. Looking at the average of the last three years, about 65% maybe. Um, and then uh, C grade is equivalent to grade four. So C grade on there is roughly sort of 31%. Uh, if you look at the average over the last three years, uh, the last three exams, sorry, they're not years, they're exams. Uh, so about 31%. It was a very little high last year, 35%. So it could be as high as 35%. Um, and so we've got some grey boundaries, but that's not enough because obviously there's a lot more grades than grade 1, grade 4, grade 7. And I don't know where the top 20% of the people who got above a grade 7, so a grade A, is going to lie pretty much um, without having a lot more data, which I don't have. So this graph that's coming up next is going to be the most crucial one, and it's one that it's supposed to be an illustration, but it is from the government, and it's one that kind of gives it away about where these things are likely to be. Now here, they've shown what they want the percentages to be between the old system and the new system. So on the right-hand side, you can see the old system there, the A star, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it's the sort of cumulative percentage of people getting those grades. On the left-hand side is the new system. Now you can see the uh, grade C and the grade 4 marry up perfectly, the grade A and the grade 7 marry up perfectly, um, and the grade G and the grade 1 marry up perfectly, which is what they've said that, that will happen. But you can also see a grade A student can now get a grade 8. Okay, So a grade A student can get equivalent to an A star, sort of. Uh, grade 9, you can see, is the creme de la creme of the A star. But, using this graph, it looks like there's going to be quite a big chunk of A-STARS students in there. Okay, and you can look at this. I mean, this is a graph that I've used for my predictions um, quite a lot, just for reference. I haven't sat there with a ruler measuring the distances between them, because I don't think it's supposed to be used in that way. But it does give you a good indication of roughly where the government want the grade boundaries to be. And so, we get on to my predictions. Now, I'm going to show you what my predictions are. Uh, I will say I didn't get any help from any other predictions. I did have quite a few sent to me. The um, most prominent one is from CGP, the guys who do the textbooks. Um, they've done their own sort of predicted paper, if you will, a practice paper they call it, because they're not allowed to call things predicted papers for some reason. Um, and they have a set of grade boundaries with it. Now I didn't look at those before, but actually mine marry up to those pretty well. Um, there's about 3% difference in some of the grades and that's it. So we're looking for ballpark figures now. I mean, as a student or a teacher, you want to know roughly where students sit. You don't mind necessarily if it's sort of half a grade off or, or even a grade off, but you don't want it to be five grades off, which a lot of teachers who have contacted me said they don't know the difference between a grade nine and a grade six students. And a lot of students are in the same boat. So this will hopefully give you some indication of where as a student you sit, or as a teacher your students sit, if that's not confusing. So here we go. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> that was bad drums. Right, so higher, I, I'm predicting grade 9 is 88% on the exam. Now ca be careful because the exam's out of 240, I think. Don't quote me on that, please don't message me if I'm wrong, but I think it's about 240. So I've done this percentages just to make it easier, and if you're just sitting one of the papers for a mark, or you're just doing one of the papers on onmaths.com, you can you can see where you are with the grade. Uh, grade eight, seventy six percent. Grade seven, sixty seven percent. Grade six, fifty five percent. Grade five, forty four percent. Grade four, thirty three percent. Grade three, seventeen percent. And the foundation, grade five, eighty six percent. Grade four, seventy one percent. Grade three, sixty one percent. Grade two, forty seven percent. And grade one, thirty one percent. Now the biggest thing to realise is this. Some schools have converted to a system of everyone doing higher because there used to be this grade E that was a nice little safety net that caught all the people who weren't necessarily strong enough to get, be getting the C grades and were looking for a D but if they just missed out on it they could get an E. That safety net is no longer there. Look at the higher. You have to get about 17%. Because a grade C is equivalent to a 4, that means sort of grade D is equivalent to a 3. It doesn't work perfectly, but sort of. That means there's no safety net anymore. And this is what we've got to be careful of. If we put all of our students in for hire, there will be use. Looking at this, looking at the data, I think it will be around 
is the lowest mark you can get on hire. So some schools might be thinking and some students might be thinking, yeah, back in the old system, I would have done hire and you know, I've got that safety net of an E-grade. I would strongly recommend having a good think about it. Obviously, if a student's likely to get a grade five, they get entered for the hire, obviously. But grade fours and grade threes are gonna be a slightly different ball game. Now, the other thing to mention is the fact that I said a grade C was equivalent to grade four. However, grade five is the new grade C. Confused? I'll explain. The government have a plan of getting everyone up to Scandinavian countries, and Scandinavian countries, their pass mark, their grade you need, is equivalent to a grade five. However, our C grade was equivalent to a grade four. It wasn't as stringent as the Scandinavian countries. Why we're looking at Scandinavian countries, I don't know, because we were looking at China a few years ago, and now we're looking at Scandinavian countries. Oddly enough, if you go to those countries, they absolutely respect our system and love it and think that we are the creme de la creme. If you go to China, they use more English textbooks than I think they use Chinese textbooks in some provinces. So it's a little bit confusing, but we'll run with it. So they want us to be at a grade five as a country, and currently we're at grade four. So I would recommend strongly, if you have the opportunity to do a bit of extra work to get a grade five, Okay, and this isn't open to all students, obviously. Okay, that's not the way the grade system works. But a grade five will be, eventually, what employers will be asking for. Okay, that's the theory behind this. So you might have been at a school where grade four is brilliant. Yeah, we all want grade four. Grade four is the creme de la creme. But then you'll leave the school, and ten years later on, it'll be, oh, I got a grade four. Uh, that's not enough. You need a grade five. Okay, so... No employer is going to say, oh, did you do the GCSE in the early years where grade four was acceptable? I don't think. I think they'll get it in their heads. Grade five is what we want for basic jobs. You know, your teachers probably said that there's some basic jobs you need a C in English and maths for. Okay, I say basic jobs, jobs that have nothing to do with English or maths, but are just using that as a standard to, uh, for picking um, future employees. So... I would recommend getting a grade 5, even if everyone's like saying to you, yep, grade 4 is enough, grade 4 is enough. Okay, if you can get a grade 5, grade 5 is the one to get. Obviously, if you get higher, brilliant, get higher. Okay, But treat grade 5 as the pass mark, as the old C grade, even though statistically it's equivalent to a grade 4. Okay, I think I've spoken enough on that. Just to help you out, I've done some graphs on these. Okay, So you can see that roughly between the grades, there's the same amount. I haven't done it that way, but it's just the way it's come out. Okay, a nice arithmetic sequence. Yay. <laughs> and you can see that's the foundation one. Higher one's slightly different. Um, so you've got a little bit of a difference, especially between that grade four and grade three. Um, I mean, perhaps I've been a bit generous to the grade three. Perhaps it might be a little bit bigger. I don't think it will be. If anything, I think it might be a little bit lower. However, it will never be the same grade as a grade it E used to be on the higher. So the, that safety net, I think, is gone. Um, but you can see that the grade 9 and the grade 5 on the foundation ones, grade, grade 5 on the foundation one, you can see that they're a lot higher. They're higher than any grade has ever been. I mean, 88% and what is it, 86% for a grade 5 on the foundation. They are not going to be easy ones. Silly little mistakes that you know we, we weren't too concerned about now become very, very important that we get right. Showing working out is more important than ever before on this exam. Okay, I hope that's helpful. If you go to the OnMath site, you've got all that information there. I'll make sure it's on the front page. Now, a little uh, message I got. Uh, I think this was quite a while ago, actually, uh, start of summer. Uh, just found out that, uh, about your site. I love it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jess. Uh, when will the new grades be on? I think that's referring to the, the mock papers. I'm in the middle of doing it now. Um, I needed to do this video before I could start having um, grades across the site, the new grades across the site. Otherwise, where else do I pitch the grades? Um, they will be quite consistent. They will be what I've discussed in this video. It's the best guess we've got. Then as soon as next June comes, when, when you guys, you know, if you're year 11, take the exam, I'll just replace it for those grade boundaries so we've got something a bit more, more concrete. Hopefully I won't need to because mine will be perfect. However, Obviously, no one knows the grade boundaries at the moment, so 
we just, this is the biggest guess we've got. Since I've become a teacher, we've always had grade boundaries from the year before, uh, in the, over the last 10 years that I've been teaching. Now we don't, so this is the first time we've had to guess. However, looking at this video, I hope you agree with me that it's the most intelligent guess. If you have any comments at all, please message me. Um, hopefully by the time you watch this video, the new grades will be on the site. Um, if you've got any uh, demon questions, we're still going to be doing those this year. Any topics you want me to prioritise uh, when I'm creating papers for on maths and when I'm creating videos for uh, on maths on YouTube, um, please message me, let me know, and I will make sure they're done. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.